Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Ashley. I'm Amy. And we're Martin Midlife Misadventures and what's happening today? Uh, Ashley's canning for you and it's storming. Oh yeah, you hear it? Yeah. We're having a storm as we do every single so, day. I had to stop painting. Yes, she had to. She always has to put her projects on halt yeah. because of the weather. It's crazy the rain we're getting. It but, is. I mean, yeah, thank you. Yep, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, the hot dogs. Not USDA approved, I don't care about that. And I use uh, an electric canner. That's why I don't show you my canning. A lot of people take issue with it. I use a Nesco, it's fabulous. We haven't died yet, thank goodness. It's, it's what we can use here. Yeah, it's what we can use. So this is not meant to be a tutorial to tell you to do this. You asked me how I do it for our family. And I'm gonna show you, that's, that's all this is. Plus, it's a money saver. If you're buying Vienna sausages, which, by the way, do not taste like hot dogs, don't think they taste like hot dogs because they don't, they are now like a dollar a can for that's that teeny tiny little can. That's crazy. It is crazy. And the hot dogs, the turkey and the chicken run about $1.19 for a 12-ounce package. So let's just get started. Let's do it. Okay, let's can the hot dogs. I've got five pint-sized jars. These two are ball jars. These are anchor hawking. Now, I have never pressure canned with these, so this should be interesting. I'm really hoping they work well because we can get them at a good price. So five pint-sized jars, that's what my canner will hold. I've got uh, beef franks, turkey franks, and chicken franks. And these are some chicken franks that we did before. See how they plump up and get? All right, first thing we need to do is get the hot dogs inside the jars. Okay, when you're filling your jars, I like to set mine kind of on an angle on its side. That way I can lay the hot dogs in here. These are the beef hot dogs I'm working on right now. And you just lay them in and fill up your jar with six hot dogs. Okay, right now we have four. I can squeeze another one right there. Might have to move some stuff over. Let's get one more. Get in there. Okay, so now, see how they are in the jars? I'm gonna fill the rest and I'll be right back. All right, I got a tea kettle going for some hot water, but I wanted to show you. These two are filled with all beef hot dogs. This one is chicken. This one is a mixture of chicken and turkey, and this one is all turkey. So these three are the anchor hawking jars, and uh, these are our ball jars. Let's get the water. Now, for the turkey and the chicken dogs, I like to fill those about a third of the way full. About a third of the way. And the reason being, and you don't have to use water at all with this, but these are very, very lean, so they do not produce a lot of their own juices. Let's see there. That's about good. Now the beef ones, on the other hand, they will produce juice. I'm only going to put about a quarter... I'm only going to fill theirs about a quarter of the way. Now, just as we do with every canning process, we've got to dip our little paper towel. This is some vinegar. And we're going to wipe our rims. Make sure we didn't get any of that hot dog juice hanging around. Okay, I've done all my rims. I made sure to fill the tops. There's no cracks in them or anything like that. So we're gonna grab ourselves. This is a ball one. So we'll go to the ball jar. That's just sitting in some warm water. We're gonna do it fingertip tight. So what that means is once you're turning and it stops, okay, it stopped. Now about a half a turn more and that's it. Let's get another one. Let's try one of these anchor hawkings. These look a little different. Okay, put your lid set on. Turn it till it stops. And then about a half a turn more. And we're good. Alrighty, I have the canner all loaded. See, I have my little stand down there to hold these up. With my canner, you're to add two quarts, eight cups of 
hot, hot water to the canner. I'll show you the water level here. See? Right about here. I'm going to take the vinegar that I had in that little bowl and I'm going to add it to the water. Try to keep these jars as cloudy free as possible. And I've already checked. Just like any canner, you've got to check your gasket. You've got to make sure everything is functioning and moving properly. And I'm going to shut it. And I'm going to lock it into place. Well, this is our basically our jiggler. See? And here's where the exhaust comes out. There's a little arrow right here. We're going to put this back on. And we're going to set it to exhaust. See here? It's on exhaust. Then that's airtight. We have exhaust over here, and that's how it goes. But to start it, we start it on exhaust. Now we go down. We see that the canner is in a closed position. This is so easy, because I want you to know this is a pressure canner first. Its secondary functions are slow cooking and pressure cooking. But the unit itself, its primary function, is to can food. So all you do is hit high, and now you're going to set your time. I'm going to process these for 75 minutes. So we're going to set the timer for 75 minutes, and then we're going to hit start. It's going to heat the canner now, all right? Once this canner comes up to temperature, it's going to beep and let me know, and then I will switch that exhaust to the airtight position. It's on its last minute of the countdown. We're almost ready. It's venting very, very good. See that? Now it's time for me to go ahead and flip this to the airtight position. And that's it. Now it's going to bring itself back up to pressure. It only takes about a minute, and it'll count down my 75-minute timer. And there it is, 75 minutes. It's now counting down. I'll show you what happens when I take them out. Okay, the canner is finished. You can hear the pressure being released. I'm going to unplug it and let it sit for one hour. Okay, it's been over an hour that it's been unplugged and completely vented. Open it away from yourself. And let's look inside. Oh, I see hot dogs. Okay, let's pull one up. Take a look. Look at that. And this is one of the ball jars. So these are the beef hot dogs. I'm going to set that one back down. And let's look at one of these anchors. Looks good. Looks really good. Now remember, these are the chicken and the turkey dogs. The splitting is normal, but believe me, the flavor and texture is fantastic. Okay, well, we did 10 jars. There's six hot, hot dogs in each jar, so three servings in each jar. And here you go. And I did it a couple different ways because I wanted to show you something. Here are some chicken dogs that we did without water in the jar. See how they plump up and fill the whole jar? They're, they're tasty. They're delicious. They're just not as juicy as these chicken franks and look how they hold their integrity a little better and they have this water in them so they tend not to be on the dry side chicken franks and here's some turkey franks that we put water in but I want you to see something look at this water nice and clear and see how this water these are our beef franks here because beef franks have a lot more fat in them so you can see now that they've cooled where there's a little fat layer developing so when you're doing meats that are super lean I recommend add a little bit of moisture into the jar let's see what else we can this weekend also this weekend I went ahead and jarred up um, some chili beans I made a big old pot of chili beans and this was the leftovers we got five pints and I made a big old batch of uh, spaghetti sauce with meat in it and I got three quarts of that so these eight jars plus my ten jars of hot dogs 18 jars of food this weekend
All right, everybody, how about those hot dogs? Super stoked. Super, super stoked about them. They're mm -hmm. good. They're delicious. They taste like they've been barbecued. You, I personally, the way I cook the hot dogs is I put butter in a pan mm, and I fry so them a good. little in some butter. And oh, and my goodness. When I barbecue them, I put them in a, a little roasting pan with butter and put them on the grill like that. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. It's so all good. about the butter. Oh, and Amy had a great idea. She said, she asked, tell them what you asked me if I could do. Oh, uh, dehydrated or fresh jalapenos or hatch chilies in it. And then the, it would absorb into that meat. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure they're not surprised about that <laughs> request, but she's right. And I think if we put like oh. some strips of fresh jalapeno in there as they're cooking, I think they would uh, get some of that flavor. We'll try it. Okay, awesome. I'm stoked. All right, again, not USDA approved. This is not a tutorial. I'm not telling you what to do. This was at your request to see the way we do it USDA for our family. Approved. I know. I'm I pretty know. sure that unpasteurized goat milk isn't either, but it's the best thing I've ever had in my life. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, to each his own. Please <laughs> keep stacking it to the Raptors and do not stop. It's getting really hard because the prices are insane. But we know you all are just sticking with it, right? That's right. That's right. Keep doing it. That's right. Don't let up. Please give us a thumbs up. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave us a comment. And we're going to be talking to you really soon. God bless you all. Peace.